All right, guys, what we're doing now is we are going to get our calibration file so we can uh, send this over to Whipple Superchargers. So the most important thing I tell people, when you buy a Whipple Complete Supercharger kit, it comes with a tune from Whipple. When you get your Tomahawk device, there is no tune on this device. There's nothing on this device. You're not going to load this on here and start the car up, install your Whipple, and you're like, oh, where's my tune? That's the biggest issue we have with customers. Not that, you know, some customers just don't read the instructions and they tell you, you want to pull this file off. So what we tell everyone is before you even think about uh, installing your supercharger kit, get your calibration file, send it off to Whipple so they can start working on the tune. Whipple says in the instructions, it takes 24 hours for turnaround, but it could take 48 or 72 hours. They get busy over there. They got a lot of cars, especially with these new calibrations on these 2024 cars, you're going to run into that. So it's a pretty simple process. Uh, for those that don't know what an OBD2 port, it looks just like this. It's same shape, except the uh, the little plugs will go into it. So it's going to be located underneath your dash. If you don't know where it's at, it's on the bottom left here. You want to plug this tool into the uh, OBD2 port. And as soon as you plug it in, you're going to see the screen fire up. I don't know how well it's going to come across on the uh, on the screen. But... Basically, see here what says request calibration file. We're going to turn the key on. You don't want to start the car. You're just requesting a calibration file. You're going to hit enter. Request cal file. File created. Remove SD car and send to Whipple. Press any key. And it's really, it's that easy. So uh, you've, hit, you've got in the bottom here, you've got an SD card. You just pop this SD card out, put it in your reader. And then you're going to be able to take that, send it over to Whipple. I'm going to go to the computer and show you where we do that, just so you know how to get it. Now, one of the other pieces of information that you're going to need for your Whipple supercharger file is the serial number off your blower. That's one of the biggest things people always ask, where do I find my serial number? So on this Gen 6 and on most of the Gen 5s, you should find it the same place. This is the back of the blower. So this is the uh, driver's side over here on the left. I'm going to kind of flip this up. If you look right here, You've got a serial number etched in here on your blower. So you're going to want to take a picture of that serial number, uh, jot it down because that's one of the pieces of information you're going to need to send over for your calibration request. All right, guys, so pop your uh, SD card out of the bottom of your Tomahawk tool. We're going to take it, put it in our little SD card reader right here. Just slide that in. Which we've already we've already been through this, so I'm just not as far as looking at it. But basically, you just go to WhippleSuperchargers.com. Top, you've got customer support calibration request. You're going to click calibration request. Now we've already pre-filled out all the info. Like I said, some things you're going to ask for is the year, make, model, the transmission being used, your VIN. So you want to have the VIN, as we talked about er earlier, your supercharger serial number. You're going to need that. It's a stage one or two mileage on the vehicle. So you're going to want to have that. And also on the back you're going to have a serial number here so you're going to need that serial number as well i've already pre-filled all that information out uh the type of file it's the req file the request file you're going to upload that and then just like i've got here i've got all the information uh filled out on it caption in there and we're going to submit it over missing or incorrect or missing oh i guess the uh we timed out at the bottom here so now it wants us to upload the file again, even though we'd uploaded the file. So we can go back here. We're going to get the REQ file one more time. And then uh, because the CAPTCHA timed out while we were setting this all up for you, we're going to put the uh, CAPTCHA in there again and then submit. Thank you for contact as it regards your calibration request. Whipple will supply your calibration in 24 to 48 hours during normal business hours. Any information required, a Whipple rep will contact you for that information. So that way you know it's successfully done, just like we got the error with CAPTCHA. If you didn't have something in there, they'd let you know, but the uh, confirmation should be in there. So we just hit the submit button. You go back over. You should have an email. Make sure you check your spam. Your Whipple support ticket has been created. So now you have a support ticket. You can click view ticket. It will actually take you to the ticket on Whipple's website. Uh, you will have to create a username and password just to go with that, but you'll be able to check out your ticket status and everything like that. So anyway, we've got the calibration uploaded, so now it's time to start taking this thing apart and then put it back together with our 2024 Whipple Supercharger.
We've got everything unpacked here. I'm ready to start getting after the install. You'll see the uh, intake system, dual air intakes, throttle body adapters, wiring harness, master bolt bags, new, um, new thermostat housing. Uh, we've got some spark plugs here. Um, all of your uh, pulleys. We've got our supercharger pulley over here. Uh, Whip also sends the uh, fuel injectors. Just set them out. Oh, here you go. The fuel injectors. The blowers come without oil in them, so you do get your supercharger oil there as well. We got our coolant hose bags and everything like that. The heat exchanger, fuel rails. All the Whipples typically, especially on the Coyotes, they always come with fuel rails. 3.75 pulley. So that should get after it on the boost pretty good on this thing. But that's everything pretty much laid out. Uh, the stage two throttle body. That's your bigger throttle body instead of the stock throttle body, 112 millimeter. So everything laid out here, it's time to get to work. As like I said before, our partners Finish Line Performance. They handle all of our installs. This is Brian Campbell, owner of Finish Line. He does everything, crew chief extraordinaire. He's already starting to pull stuff off the top. I'm gonna lay some things over the fenders just to uh, Protect the paint and stuff on these as you get to working on them, just in case you scrape across something or anything like that. Take off those dual air inlets. You've already seen these take these off once when we pulled out the uh, carbon traps, but I'm going to pop these off each side. Get them ready to come out, free up a little room for uh, everything else. Now, the one thing you're going to make sure you pull out is your mass air sensors. Those are going to take a, a torch bit. T20. T20 Torx bit. The one thing you see here, Brian pointed out, you've got this uh, the Whipple airbox piece. goes right back into the uh, factory airbox spot. Pretty cool the way they designed that around that factory airbox. And that probably has a lot to do with carb. Carb is real big on factory airboxes. So uh, one other thing. What were you pointing out about the transmission? They have a, a solenoid now to, to run coolant back to the transmission cooler. Nice. That's similar to the F-150s, Brian was saying. And as we go through the instructions, what Brian was just pointing out, you've got two throttle bodies, so you've got two harnesses. So either in the harness and probably in the tune, we assume they'll be turning off one of the throttle bodies just to, you know, disable it since we're going to have one large throttle body on this. Now, if you've got a Stage 1 kit, you're just going to be reusing one of the OEM throttle bodies. But on the Stage 2 kit, as you saw, we've got the larger 112. Again, it's supposed to outflow the old 132 ovals with the design of this new Gen 6. In your initial stages, you're going to be pulling stuff off, pulling stuff off, pulling stuff off. Biggest thing is going to be keeping track of everything as you take it off the car so that you don't lose anything if you need to put it back together or if you decide to return the car to stock at some point. I'm pulling off the uh, fuel connector there. We always use a towel just to kind of keep, you know, if there's some fuel buildup, some fuel pressure, just you may get a little bit going around. Get used to some smells and things like that. You're probably going to smell some coolant, some fuel for a little bit. Biggest thing, like Brian was just saying, is make sure you follow instructions step by step. Um, it's real important that you follow Whipple's instructions to a T. Now, we may skip around a little bit just because Brian has done so many of these kits over the years. I mean, they do average one supercharger a week sometimes two to three a week for the last, you know, 10, 11 years. So with doing that many superchargers, sometimes they find ways they like to do things a certain way that might be a little quicker or things that they know. But if, you know, you're doing this yourself at home, we highly recommend that you go step by step for the instructions. Like I tell all the customers, read through the instructions once uh, to make sure you've been through everything, anything you may need, any tools you may need. That way you don't uh, let anything sneak up on you during the install. Per the instructions, we're going to uh, go ahead and start gapping the plugs while Brian's pulling the pull plugs out. I'm going to get the new plugs ready. We're going to gap them down. Whipple recommends 0.31. I may tighten it up a little bit, 0.28, because they tend to loosen up a little bit. So, again, follow the instructions. We do things how we do, but uh, I'll probably end up gapping them to 0.28 because Lord knows as soon as we can turn this thing up, we're going to. So, one thing Brian was just complaining about is Ford. They put a little clip on the back of these intakes just for the wiring harness, and they put it on the back of the intake. So to remove the intake, you got to get to these clips, which is kind of a real pita. So this is something you're going to come across when you're doing this, but it is a little bit of a pain in the ass. It would be nice if they just did something and clipped it kind of to the firewall. It would make it a lot easier. But while he's doing that, take these uh, plugs sent to us by Ford Motor Company. Um, well, not by Ford, from Ford Motor Company via Whipple. And I want to go ahead and get these gaps.
This is the tool that I keep and use, basically screw the plug in. The first two are actually 10 and 18, which is 28. Another reason I like the 28, and we're just going to crimp these down and uh, cap all these plugs. And for the novice guys, I'm going to address the spark plugs because I'm sure one of the questions we'll get is, why do you get new spark plugs? My car's only got 1,000 miles on it. Do I really need spark plugs? Spark plugs serve two purposes. You're going to get a heat range colder, which basically means the plug just runs cooler. Uh, when you're creating boost or creating heat, heat in the engine, so the cooler plug holds up to the boost better. Typically, when you're going 10, 12 pounds of boost or something like that, you go one heat range colder. On applications where you're running 15, 20 pounds of boost, you may go two heat ranges colder. 30 pounds of boost, you may go three heat ranges colder. The other thing that you're doing is you're tightening up the gap. So your stock gap is going to be a much larger gap. You gap down the plugs, you tighten this gap, you shorten the distance between the tip here. And what that's going to do is it's going to reduce the chance of what we call spark blowout. What spark blowout is, the basically the air pressure is so high that it actually blows the spark out and doesn't allow you to get any spark in the car. So you're doing two things, heat range colder and tightening the gap for the spark blowout to keep that from happening. Now, of course, you don't have to have a lift to do a supercharger install, but this is what it makes it really nice. And again, Brian's done so many of these, he could just cruise through, you know what I mean? 2024 Mustangs, your computer is actually down here underneath the front end. Brian actually likes his bracket. He was just pointing out these may be really nice parts to have uh, for some of the turbo swap applications where we end up relocating the PCM right to the same area. So we have to take that part number down. Next step, of course, since we're going to be doing a heat exchanger and everything, doing all the coolant hoses and things, is to uh, pull the front bumper off. So I'm going to make sure any of the headlight harnesses, anything like that, are uh, unclipped. Anything else that might get in the way, we want to unclip all that stuff as well. Of course, it wouldn't be late night work without a snack. Uh, the missus and my young daughter made some uh, pizza rolls, some pound cake, sodas, and chips. We all know that snacks keep you going. Plugs all gap, going back in. It's the last one. One of the reasons you want to get your plugs back in right away is so you don't drop anything in your cylinders. Be amazed how many times people take plugs out and they just leave them out. Don't cover the holes, don't get plugs back in. They drop something down in the cylinder. And next thing you know, you're pulling an engine. So you got your little drain cock there. So it's draining real slow right now, but Ryan likes to get it going. And then uh, once he takes the cap off, it should really start flowing out. Not so much. <laughs> well, that's really flowing. <laughs> Brian said not so much. <laughs> There we go. All right. Now we're cranking. So now our active grill shutters, that'll be the next thing that comes out. These are deactivated in the tune to our understanding. Now some of the cars that have like your uh, your radar, I guess, your, you know, your adaptive cruise and things like that, where ours is a base model, we won't have that. But some of those, I think the frame will definitely have to go back in. Don't think it has to go back in for ours, but we will be taking a look at that. All right, so you see your heat exchanger going back in here. He's just got this all mounted. And uh, again, so you saw the brackets earlier that Whipple gives you here. Then you've, get, you've got two standoffs on each side here, one upper, one lower. It's gonna be on both sides. And that's what uh, Whipple uses to mount this in here. But typically what, what the heat exchanger is for, it's basically like a radiator for your supercharger. So when you have your coolant coming into the supercharger, it's going to come out hot. This is going to allow it to cool the supercharger air down so you get that cooler air, uh, air intake charge temperature. And with Brian, and we were talking to Justin at uh, VMP earlier, anytime you can direct more air back in. So we always put these type of things back in, your little flaps and vents. And we haven't read that part of the instructions yet, but we'll just, uh, worst case, put a little hole here to tap through just that way. Uh, or cut that out. That way when we get our hose and everything, it just helps direct your air, all your flaps, everything is going to fit back in there. It just helps direct air to the radiator here, air to the air boxes there. Makes everything work the way that it should from the factory. One of the things we like about Whipple, if you come and look at their, their bag kits that they send you, this is really nice. So every, every bag of bolts has a shipping bolt bag. Tells you what bag number it is, that type of thing. 
This was our heat exchanger one over here. Lists all the bolts out for it. Same thing here, shipping bolt bag, five bolt supercharger pulley bag, things like that. And Whipple details everything out really nice. The nice thing about this is for some reason, say you got a wrong bolt, you can get the bag number off there and send it to Whipple. They can check and see if anybody else's kit may have been affected. Like somehow somebody just, you know, made human error and, you know, got the wrong bolt in multiple kits. This way they can go back and look at that. That's why they package everything, but it makes the install so much nicer as well. Just makes it much easier to find all the bolts and everything that you need. Before we end the day, one last thing uh, that I thought I'd point out. We always uh, tape up like some painter's tape. We're always going to tape up the uh, the cylinders. That way there's no chance of dropping something in there again. That's the biggest thing. You drop something down in there, you've just uh, created a huge nightmare for yourself. So that should be one of the first things that you want to do. We want to sign off for today, day one, Whipple Supercharger install. We'll see you back tomorrow.